All right, guys, so it's time to find a winner for the contest. And to do this, we're going to make a, a, a thing to, to find the winner for us. So I think this would be a fun little bit of JavaScript. So what I've already done is I've written some CSS and I've written a little, little two lines of HTML. And I've come here and I've created a variable called winner button. And that's this thing right here that I can click on that doesn't look like a button. So that is selected. And then I have a variable here of winner name, which is this right here which right now just has three little dots in it that is awaiting the winner. I've also made an array here of all the people who have entered into the contest. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna scroll all the way down past my array and we're gonna start doing some stuff. So I'm gonna make a variable here, which will be a function, a winner. So let's pick a winner, pick a winner. That sounds like a good type of function to do. Um, so this is a function, so I'm gonna say num because it's gonna take a number and when we do the number, it's going to spit something out. And this is an arrow function. So if you're used to the other way of doing something, this would be like a var pick a winner is equal to function, whoops, function uh, with the num in there. Pretty much with arrow functions in the whole ES6 thing, we don't have to actually write the word function anymore. It saves a few little keystrokes along the way. So my pick a winner is taking a number and it's going to, um, what do we need? We need, we need to generate a random number. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, const winning number. So we're going to have a winning number and it's going to be a random number. So uh, we can make a random number with JavaScript really easily just by doing math.random. And to see what this is actually doing, let's have this console log the winning number as we work along with this. If I do a, um, let's just run, pick a winner. Let's just have that fire off and we should see a random number show up there. There we go. And if I just change my code here, it will run again. And there we go. And we'll do it one more time. And you can see it's always a decimal. So that's not a good thing. Now we can easily enough multiply this. So say I did times 10. Now we're not dealing with decimal. Well, we still have lots of decimal points, but at least we have a, a, a number there. But this is still obviously an issue because we don't want to have a decimal. We can't have, you know, in between two winners. We got to pick a number. So we can wrap this in something called math, oops, math floor. And my math floor here, I'm just going to put parentheses. So my math floor is taking this number that we were just looking at, and then it's rounding it down. And so now it's picking a random number. And it's pretty much always going to get a number between zero and nine. Um, let's actually just, yeah, we'll leave it like that for a moment. And we can just see it, it's going through it always be a number between zero and nine with the way this works. There's my zero can never reach 10 because it's always rounding down. But I don't want to multiply it by 10. I want to multiply it by how many people we actually have here. So this here is called contestants. Um, so here we're going to be accepting the argument of num. So we're just going to multiply it by that for the moment. Um, and now it's going to be not a number because I have to put something in here. So now if I put a one, it's going to always be zero. I can't have anything else because it always will pick a number, but let's put two here. And now it will either pick one or zero. There we go. There's a one. There's a one. Anyway, you get the idea. It's either going to be picking one or zero at random every time. Um, now, obviously, I don't want it to be doing that. And I don't really want it to be giving me a console log either every time. What we want it to do is we want it to uh, tell us who the winner actually is. So we can have it do that. So instead of console logging, what we're going to do is we're going to create another variable called winner. And this is a, a little bit more exciting. And the way the winner is going to work is it's going to be equal to contest, contestants, and then winning number. So it's going to take this number that's randomly generated, and then it's going to find that person in the array. So to show you a little bit of what's going on here, if we do contestants and I put, I don't know, uh, 15, it's going to find the 15th person inside of contestants, except I probably spelt it wrong. 
Uh, whoops, we need to console log that. So if I console log that, there we go. So Tupacan, 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 Tupacan is our, our contestant number 15. Um, now, one thing with the this is it's always rounding down. So it's starting at zero and counting up. But that's okay, because at zero, we do have a person. Uh, work low is uh, run in there at the zero. So w the reason for this is arrays always start counting from zero and work their way up. So here we have our zero. And yeah, I think that's that's it, right? Um, so then, you know, whatever number ends up in here, it will give us a name. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So what this will do is it will randomly generate a number. It will put that number as my winning number and that will find my winner in my list and it will save that as a variable. So what we need it to do though, once it gets that, is we need it to return the winner. Because I don't want to console log it, that's kind of boring. What we want to do is we want that to show up where these three dots are and that's easy enough to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my winner button, which is the button here that I can click on. And on that winner button, I'm going to add event listener. And what I want to do is I want to listen for a click. So when someone clicks, we're going to do a function. Whoops, that should be an arrow. Um, and here I'm putting an underscore. Whoops, that should also be a comma. I'm not doing so good. Um, I'm doing an underscore that's the same as just an open and close parentheses with an arrow function. It's just a you know, you can do a little bit less typing by putting an underscore. Save yourself some keystrokes. I thought that was really silly and then I started using it and I love it. Um, all right, so what we want is we want to take my winner name and we want to change the inner HTML. And what are we going to change it to? Let's just do hello. Um, so when I click on this, the three little dots should be changed to the words hello. So let's try that. It worked. Oh, I'm getting nervous now because we're getting really close, super close. We're pretty much there. Um, what we need to do now is instead of having it say hello, we want it to print out something from my pick a winner. But um, we're going to do one more thing here just to keep going. Uh, I'm going to make one more variable called number of entries because we need to know how many people we have are we have and that would be contestants dot length so it's going to take how many contestants we have it's going to count them all it's going to give me a number and we're going to use that number in here to say that pick a winner and we're going to put in our number of entries. So what's going to happen now is when I click on this, not yet, soon, when I click on that, it's going to run through all of this. It's going to take the number of entries we have. So it's going to put that number in here. It's going to run that number. It's going to randomly generate a number based on that. It's going to then use that random number to find out who the winner is. It's going to take that winner and it's going to print that winner uh, as the inner HTML and it's going to replace this with what we just did. Sound good? I almost feel like I, I should have added like a countdown thing now or something. I'm actually kind of nervous and I'm not even the one who's up for this. This is fun. Um, so should I do a countdown? Let's do a countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. And the winner is... Slacker King, congratulations. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Um, so there you have it. So Slacker King, if you could just get in touch with me either through a message on YouTube, you can do that on the About tab. There's a way to message me or just leave a comment down below uh, for the best way for me to get in touch with you and we'll uh, get all of that set up. And for the rest of you, thank you all so much for watching. If you are interested in the book anyway, go and check out the description down below and Slacker King will be in touch so we can uh, hook everything up for that. Thank you so much for watching this. Sorry that the video was a little later than I planned on doing it. I've just been crazy busy lately, but it's better late than never, right? So uh, once again, thanks for watching. And as usual, don't forget to make your corn on the internet just a little bit more awesome.